Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bets Golden. I'm so excited today. We get to make a card with this awesome new set by Simon Hurley. Uh, it's the He Is Risen set. I love it because I the coloring that I have to do is so minimal. So this should come together relatively quickly. I went ahead and cut down a, a base for my card. So I took a eight and a half by 11 piece of white Simon Hurley cardstock and I just cut it and then I scored it in the middle to give me the perfect A2 size. And then in addition, I have a, another card base for another time. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this card. Now you can fold the card in half if you have a smaller Misty. However, I like to keep the, the card front open. I just um, think that it just is easier for me and it fits perfectly into the Misty, this, this Misty here. I think this is like the original size. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just take and put a magnet down and pop on one of these stamps. And I'm going to just be working pretty much exclusively in the Misty today with the exception of when I do a little bit of ink blending. So I'm just gonna pop this down right about here. Cause I really want this to take center stage. And then I'm going to just take this at this point and as you can tell I'm working on this side because this is a lot of don't make the mistake of doing it on this side because then your your card will fold backwards so if you're doing your entire card base in this you just have to remember that you're going to be working to the far left that's why I like to put that crease in there put my watermark on so I remember otherwise I'll forget I'm just using some archival acid free permanent waterproof ink in jet black and just stamp this over like so. And then go ahead, I wanna go through one more time. I haven't used this stamp before, so it may take a couple a couple um, passes with the Misty to get a really nice coverage here. I'm liking that. So I'm just gonna take some of my best cleaner ever and uh, clean off my stamp that. I really like it, it gets the archival up, but it does leave a residue of film. So I like to go over with a little bit of water and just wipe it up from there too. And the water actually does help remove whatever was left on the stamp. From now on, I'm going to go ahead and do that little filler one. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to use my Gur, which is this one, this ink. It's really nice brown. I thought it'd be pretty as the wood. And I'm just going to line this up to the best of my ability. And I actually like that coverage. I'm not gonna go over it again. Um, I really like that. I could go over it for a little bit more of a vibrant, but I think that's just about perfect. For this, I do not have to use any special cleaner. I can just simply take some water or my stamp squeegee and just wipe it off. Since it is the dye ink, it comes up really nicely with just some water. And then I want to go through and do a sentiment on the front and I don't want it to, I want it to resist my, um, what I'm going to be doing with the inking. So I'm going to emboss it and I'm just going to use some of my VersaFine pigment ink in black. Um, so I'm just thinking that I want to do a sentiment somewhere on the front here. Um, 
even though that's a nice sentiment to go on the inside, I'm going to do it on this little part here. And I'm just going to take my static pouch because I do want to emboss. Now we get to color in some of this, and I really like, I think it was this the spun sugar I liked for like the rose. And since it is um, with the archival ink, I don't have to worry about it interacting or running as I color this in. I'm going to keep my lilies white, and I'm just going to color in the roses and then also the greenery. I'm going to use the fine tip for the stems, if there are any. Just gonna take this off, rub some off, put a little bit of water there, take my little brush and just brush this into the tips right there. And then I'm going to go grab a different green to do my leaves. All right, so I went in with some of the mowed grass. I liked how that looked. And I'm actually going to go in now with it again, but I'm going to mute it out a little bit, lighten it up by just rubbing some off and spritzing with some water and filling, just coloring in the rest of those leaves. Now, I really love how that is looking, but I need to add in some color around the sides and whatnot around the edges. I'm so I pulled in a stencil and I'm just going to use the new sidewalk chalk to kind of make everything pop. So for this next step, I definitely want to take some tape just to tape it off because I am going to do some ink blending and really I don't care if it gets on the back of the card but some people do and this is just a nice way to make sure that you get a nice clean edge all right or you could fold the card too but I like to work with it flat until I'm done so I'm going to new, use the new sidewalk chalk for this next step and I'm just going to go around the edges with it first and then I'm going to go in with a stencil as well and just go over it with the same color again and what it will do is it'll just darken up areas but it'll be really subtle and the reason why I embossed my sentiment was so that it did not end up covering it or muting it in any 
way, shape, or form. Again, if you would like anything, I will have everything listed down below in the description box. So check there first. And now I'm going to take, this is actually called a stained glass. It's not one of the newer releases, but I just thought it worked really well with this image. And I'm just going to use the same sidewalk chalk that I used to ink, and I'm going to pop it on in a couple of places, making sure that I go off of the card base on some areas because it's very pleasing to the eye when you do that. So really pretty, simple, relatively quick card to come together thanks to that fabulous layering aspect of that stamp set. And I just love how it turned out. You could even go and uh, pop on a little bit of water if you want to, um, just to get it to move slightly. That's kind of fun. And I also am just gonna lift it from that area. There we go. All right, you guys, I certainly hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas for some pretty Easter cards that are simple, but yet quite striking. Um, everything I have is listed down below in the description box. I try to get you as many direct links as I possibly can. I also have the Ranger um link provided as well for um i think almost everything that i use today is from ranger so you can find it there too if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up share it in your favorite facebook group or on twitter or on, on your instagram wherever um that'd be great if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and if you haven't subscribed to my channel i certainly hope that you consider doing so making sure that you hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time i have a new video dropping until next time i'm bets golden happy crafting